I know we only have one month into the year, but it's a lot of what I'm going to be talking about in the monthly recap and that I'm going to post this weekend. If you're wanting to know what the market is going to be like this year, then just look at last year because we're really going tit for tat here. In this video, we're going to go over the single family and condo markets in the state of Massachusetts. We're also going to do a quick interest rate update and we will also talk about some relevant current events. A really important one we're going to talk about today. Demand wasn't as strong as last week, but it was right in line with this week last year, both the condo and single family market. It's a strong market and it's going to stay strong. And it's actually most likely only going to get stronger. Now, I know I've been a broken record on this one, but if you're a buyer and you're looking to buy this spring, then save yourself possibly tens of thousands of dollars and start your search a little earlier. Hi, I'm Jeff Chubb. I'm a recovering investment banker turned real estate agent, and I've sold more than a thousand houses. If you have any real estate questions, then no, I am here to help. Also, I'm looking to buy houses. Let me know if there are any houses that you're aware of that need a lot of wealth, tender, loving care, friend or family members, a random house that you drive by every day and it's in shambles. The uglier, then the better. If you know of one, then please shoot me an email or visit cashofferma.com. Now, let's get into it all and jump into the single family market stats. Nothing abnormal here. It's more of the same in the sense of this is just the bottoming out that we see every single year. Inventory is level and it's going to stay this way for the month. Inventory is up slightly to 2,872 single family houses on the market in the state of Massachusetts. We now have 3.27% less homes on the market today than just 28 days ago. And it looks like inventory is going up slightly this week, kind of bucks a little bit of the trend that we saw in 2023. The important thing to take away is that inventory is still very tight. We have 158 fewer single family houses on the market today than we did today back in 2023. It's 800 more single family homes on the market than today and compared to levels in 2022. Here's the difference maker. We listed 695 single family homes this week. That is 63 more units or 10% more than the same week in 2023. So four weeks ago, it was 12% less. Then three weeks ago, it was 10% less. Then two weeks ago, we were even with 2023. Last week, we listed 13% more houses and now we're 10% more. It's an interesting trend. And if it continues, then we're going to start to see some slight inventory builds week over week. Buyers, this is exactly what you want to hear as we go into the spring market. The four-week rolling average is 546 units. Now, you can barely see the blue line for this week, and that's because we barely missed the sales levels that we saw this week last year. We 679 homes go under agreement. This was four units, or 0.6% less than the same week last year when 683 single-family houses went under agreement. Now, I find it a little interesting that the surge of under agreements that we saw last week it didn't continue. The 679 units under agreement was 7.6% off of last week's pace of 735 units. Now that four week rolling average is 575 units. So when compared to last year's market, new listings were up by 10%, while under agreements were down by 0.6% for this week. Now there were 476 single family houses that closed last week for an average sales price of $751,000 and a median sales price of $595,000. Sales levels compared to the same week last year were up by 15.5% as there were 412 single family homes that sold last week, uh, last year, last week, for an average sales price of $706,000. Months of inventory, this is how we determine what type of market we're in, zero to five months. That's considered a seller's market. The closer that you get to zero, then the stronger and more aggressive of a seller's market it is. This week, months of inventory actually nudged up to 1.26 months from last week's 1.23 months. Now, the 1.26 months this week is compared to the 1.16 months this week last year. Now, this is more data showing that the market this year is very similar to the market conditions of last year. Real quick, it's my shameless plug. You knew it was coming. I just wanted to mention that if you're thinking about buying or selling a home, then it would be a true pleasure to help you. Now, onto the condo market. More of the same in the condo market. It's just plugging along. We have 1,786 condos on the market as of Monday. Now, this is a 29-unit increase from last week's 1,757 units and is 0.9% more than the inventory levels on the market just 28 days ago. Now, the blue line broke out this week. Barely. We now have 39 more units on the market today than today last year. 355 more units than compared to the inventory levels of 2022. Now, the 39 units is a 19-unit build from last week's 20-unit difference. So keep an eye on that, right? 
New listing activity was right in line with last year. There are 386 condos that came on the market last week with the four week rolling average of 342 condos. Now that 386 units listed was three units or 0.8% more than the 383 condos that came on the market the same week in 2023. Man. Under agreements just continue to play tit for tat with 2023. This week, we put 326 units under agreement. Now, this 326 units was one unit or 0.3% shy of last year's numbers when we put 327 condos under agreement. So, three weeks ago, it was seven units shy. And then two weeks ago, it was six units shy. Last week, it was 12 units shy. And now, it's just one unit shy of last year's numbers. Our under agreements are right in line with 2023. Now that four week rolling average is 288 units. So 0.7% more listings that came on the market when compared to this week last year while selling 0.3% fewer condos. Wow, those numbers are close. There were 172 condos that sold this week for an average sales price of $669,000 and a median sales price of $519,000. This same week last year, there were 213 condos that sold. So sales levels were actually down by 19%. Months of inventory, that actually ticked up to 1.92 months from last week's 1.87 months. And this is compared to the months of inventory of 1.67 months this week last, last year. Any chance you could just do me a huge favor? Can you hit that like button right down there? Believe it or not, it just makes a huge difference for me and the channels. It just plays with that YouTube algorithm while subscribing. That one doesn't hurt either. So if you haven't subscribed, please consider it. Now time to talk about interest rates because boy, did this week suck. It was a bit of a bloodbath for interest rates this week because a lot of buyers are now seeing interest rates over the 7% level. So what's going on? Why? It's because of inflation. Well, it's because of the strong jobs report that was printed last week, really. But these strong job numbers have guaranteed that a rate cut is off the table for March. It is also most likely taking the rate cut off the table for May and drastically decrease the chances that a rate cut, it's going to happen in June. You are wasting your time here. It was well over a month ago that I was saying that there wasn't going to be a Fed cut in March. Inflation's coming back. I've said it before. Inflation in a huge economy like this, it's hard to stamp out. History is a great indicator as to where we are headed. Go back and take a look at what happened in the 1970s. Inflation, it's making us all poorer each and every single day. The best way you can edge it is gold and real estate. We can all thank the drunk, money-hungry, power-addicted politicians in Washington for this, and inflation will never go down as long as the government is printing trillions of dollars a year to finance that bloated budget. These are very simple economic principles that are so-called betters they just don't seem to understand a little different today but i want to talk about a very serious risk and a problem for home buyers and sellers you need to be extremely careful when doing a real estate transaction check out this article real estate fraud risk on the rise and victims are sounding the alarm there is a lot of money involved with real estate transactions and when there is a lot of money involved well that's when you get the pieces of cow dung that aren't willing to actually work an honest job and take advantage and steal what is sometimes people's life savings. The article says that criminals are increasingly exploiting such transactions through real estate fraud, robbing victims who are often left with little or no recourse. Crazy stat, but they found that one in 20 Americans who bought or sold a home within the past three years have been victims of some type of real estate fraud with the median amount in consumer losses exceeding $70,000, 70 grand. These losses are from fraudsters either stealing down payments or seller proceeds. And it's all generally done around wire fraud. These asses have gotten so good at this, their preference of choice is to hack into a title company or a closing attorney system. And then they just monitor and wait to see when and who they would like to strike. The article talks about a situation where a buyer received a legitimate email from a title company that alerted him that he would be receiving wiring instructions the next day. Well, the next day, he received an email with an identical email signature with the wiring instructions. He wired over the more than $28,000 to only find out that it was a fraudster impersonating the contact at the title company, and they gave him wire instructions to another account. This type of crime cost victims a record of $446.1 million in 2022. Now, the most crazy situation I have heard is where a hacker actually got into attorney's Verizon phone. From there, they were able to get into the attorney's email. From there, they were able to monitor the deal flow and waited for a day where a firm had multiple closings, think end of the month. They then had a call forwarding on the attorney's phone to some guy in Texas impersonating that attorney. 
The fraudsters initiated the wires of $1.6 million. The bank called to verify that it was that attorney on the phone, and well, it just went to the forward impersonating person. Wires were enacted and $1.6 million of seller proceeds just disappeared. So what can you do to ensure that this doesn't happen to you? It's as simple as not wiring funds. Good old fashioned checks and bank checks for the balance on closing day is the way to ensure you don't fall into this trap. If you are gonna wire, call and verify to the person that you know and you talked to beforehand. We also have a system in our area called Deposit Link, which is not a wire. A system like this is great and it's well worth that $10 or so processing charge. The other thing that needs to happen, and I can't believe I'm calling for more regulation here, but the state needs to make it a law that any company holding escrows needs to have cyber insurance. Cyber insurance, it's expensive, very expensive, so very few have it. But when you're tasked to hold what could be someone's life savings, then this is a simple protection that needs to be required. And this is going to cause many companies to stop holding escrows. And I could even see a situation where there's a charge for a company to hold that escrow. Personally, I think this is well worth it as it ensures that your money that someone else is holding is secure. Want to talk about your own personal real estate needs? Again, it's Jeff Chubb. Whether you're looking to buy or sell a home in the next nine or 90 days, then I would love to chat with you and just find out more about your real estate goals. And if you know of anyone that is thinking about buying or selling a house, then I truly appreciate you just passing along my contact information. You can also visit us at youtuberealestateagent.com or find all my contact information in the description below. Until next time.